Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today, uh, you know, we've got into quite a detail of it. The thermal power station, we've, we've seen quite a detail. Today, just a minor sort of a video to understand just a little few things. The, the, the dry based analysis, the wet based analysis, right? Yes. Starting off with what? With the thermal power plant. So we've seen that the heat energy is basically being utilized to convert into mechanical. Uh, to electrical energy right and the heat energy comes from where heat energy basically is a byproduct heat energy so I, I will just go a little slow in this video heat energy is the byproduct of what it's the byproduct of the combustion of hydrocarbons the combustion of hydrocarbons right yes sir Hydrocarbons, what? Those containing carbon and hydrogen chemistry, you know it very well. See, right? Yes, combustion is what? Combustion is the burning of fuel in the presence of what? In the presence of oxygen. So, combustion is basically fuel plus oxygen. This is called what? This is called an air fuel mixture. So, you have to have a proper concentration of both. A proper concentration, you have to do the proper calculations for how much oxygen would be required for a proper amount of fuel. How much fuel would be required for this much amount of oxygen? The air fuel mixture should be in a proper composition, a proper amount, right? Yes. Higher values, lower values that would lower the efficiency, the, the combustion would not be taking would not be taking place properly. Right? Yes, sir. You have to control it. The fuel is provided what? Mainly the fuel that is used is what? The fuel mainly that is used over here is coal. This is a cheap form of what hydrocarbon, cheap source of energy. So what do you do is basically air fuel mixture economy you have to ca complete calculation by knowing how much amount of oxygen is required for how much uh, coal and where does oxygen come from so I told you over there we had a forced out fan which was pulling the air inwards right yes coal is being used now coal again is not a pure form of carbon again it has got impurities so basically what has coal got so i will write over here coal has got an amount of what uh, uh, where does it have it is not pure carbon it consists of carbon oxygen nitrogen sulfur and uh, hydrogen and moisture and ash content moisture and ash content now why have i written this in sterics is because these are the most important the moisture and the ash content is the most important carbon oxygen nitrogen sulfur uh, these are also the composition of coal but the most important are the moisture and the gas now uh, when this uh, combustion takes place that is fuel plus oxygen so this gives you what this gives you heat plus flue gases that are called heat plus flue gases are a result of what are a result of this combustion so i wrote it on the opposite side i will just give you this direction right so this is basically a 50 50 reaction which is which means that 50 percent of flue gases are formed 50 percent of heat is generated this flue gases is basically a waste and what are these so these are basically the oxides the, they form what the sulfur and nitrogen combine with oxygen to form a sulfur dioxide and and oxides of what oxides of nitrogen right and these are the most dangerous or poisonous gases you could say so resulting in environmental pollution and resulting in a health hazard these are dangerous these are poisonous right now coming back to the coal content carbon oxygen nitrogen sulfur so you are given a coal you have to go for what you have to go for the coal that has more carbon content 80 percent carbon content of coal is what it is uh, you know uh, it can be used if it has 80 percent of a carbon content this is the minimum level of carbon content that a coal should have to be used in a thermal power station We've got a lot of coal over here in Dara, but that is not used. Why? Because that is 
that has a very low that does not pass this test of 80 percent carbon content right yes and this moisture and this ash content they can also be removed easily they can be removed easily i told you these are the most important one and these can be removed easily the other ones can also be removed but they cannot be removed that easily this one can be removed easily we've got two methods ash is removed by a method known as dry based analysis dry based analysis and the moisture the moisture is removed by what by a process wet based analysis what do you have is basically you have got your coal you've got your raw coal so what do you do is what do you do is that you uh, wash it if you wash it so the ash content finishes right and similarly if you uh, uh, let it dry or what you do is uh, yes if the moisture is, is uh, eliminated by drying by drying it right yes so bitumen and anthracite is the coal basically that is used because of its high uh, 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 this carbon content bitumen and anthracite we'll see this when we'll talk about the calorific value these are, these have got the high calorific values we'll see calorific value also but the higher the carbon content the higher is the calorific value or the high heating value and the higher the calorific value so i would say the higher is the efficiency of the system so i would just place a direct relation between them right yes so it must have greater than 80 percent of uh, composition to be used a carbon composition to be used in thermal power plants let's say i have an example and what is the example uh, that that what or i'll take these notes with me if i have anything that i have not discussed so far so what do you have is heat energy is converted to electricity fossil fuels coal oil or gas kinetic energy turbine generator combustion furnace boiler high pressure steam turbine fixed speed now why uh, the generator must rotate at a fixed speed to produce fixed frequency right to get to uh, fixed frequency at the output Thermal power plants are outstanding because of their capacity and long service life. Therefore, in an interconnected system, thermal power plants are usually coordinated, run continuously and are acting as base load plants. Coal, carbon, sulfur, nitrogen, hydrogen, oxygen, moisture and gas, right? Yes. Uh, two problems with the coal the first is finite supplies of course it would have to finish one day so finite supplies of fossil fuels will eventually run out and the second is what the burning of fossil fuel will give rise to gases which form environmental pollution and global warming so if i write over here are the problems with coal or what number first would be the finite supplies of course it would have to run out one day how much mines would you have and the second one is that it causes pollution and global warming and health hazard etc etc i told you these gases are dangerous despite abundant supply of coal it is a non-renewable source and it is formed through a highly complex process you cannot form it that easily and it takes time it takes a lot of time the formation coal uh, the formation of coal is a time consuming process it is a very complex process so it cannot be done you know artificially that easily to say environmental pollution health hazards toxic gases carbon monoxide carbon dioxide sulfur dioxide and fumes emissions so i mentioned over here are only these two you also have carbon monoxide carbon dioxide as well so carbon monoxide carbon dioxide are another dangerous poisonous gases the calorific value of fuel content depends upon the carbon content calorific value we'll see in the next video let's say talk about the dry based analysis over here if i name it number one i name it number two let's say i talk about number one dry based analysis in the dry based analysis the moisture content is oh in the dry based analysis the moisture content is uh, excluded so i believe i have mentioned it over here wrong so the first one is moisture 
so for the moisture you have dry based analysis for the ash you have wet based analysis so moisture is what removed by a factor of 1 minus m divided by 100 and only solid compounds of carbon hydrogen nitrogen are considered so let's say 1 minus m by 100 this is the factor by which uh, this is uh, uh, eliminated the moisture content the total the total would give you 100 right carbon plus hydrogen plus oxygen plus nitrogen plus sulfur plus ash would give you 100 which means by removing the moisture the, the composition of the other contents would increase and we'll see that increasing factor let's see we are given an example perform the dry analysis and sample of bituminous coal of the following composition so carbon is given 80.5 then what do you have hydrogen is 4.1 then you have oxygen is 3.0 nitrogen is 1.5 sulfur is 1.2 ash is 5.3 and moisture is 4.4 right yes so to perform the dry base analysis the moisture is excluded so the moisture is excluded by what one one means what hundred percent total minus minus what the moisture content that is 5.3 divided by 100 so this much content has to be removed which comes out to be 0 0.956 so 0 0.956 this has been removed so by this factor now the others would increase so which means the carbon oh, that is initially 80.5 would go to what you would have to divide 80.5 by this factor that is 0 0.956 and the carbon content so initially have a look initially you were saying that 80.5 yes this is part in the test of 80 percent it can be used in a thermal pulse station but you can increase the efficiency you can increase the calorific value you can increase the carbon content simply by a simple analysis that is the uh, dry, um, um, uh, dry base analysis you can simply remove the uh, the the moisture by a simple uh, experiment or simple procedure so the carbon content have a look comes out to be 84.20 84.20 percent have a look it has increased right yes similarly hydrogen oxygen nitrogen just do it for yourself hydrogen would be 4.1 divided by 0 0.956 uh, oxygen would be 3 upon 0 0.956 uh, nitrogen would be 1.5 upon 0 0.956 sulfur would be 1.2 upon 0 0.956 and ash would be four five point oh and i believe i made a mistake over here 5.3 uh, so over here I had 4.4 okay I am just mixing it up 4.4 why because I have to this is the dry based analysis so I have to remove the ash I have to remove the moisture in the dry based analysis we have to remove the moisture ash would now be what 5.3 divided by 0 0.956 so all these contents would also increase just let me write 84.20 4.28 3.13 1.57 1.25 and 5.54 so have a look the other contents have also increased but the the major thing for us is the carbon content which has increased adding these wall would approximately give you 100 percent right yes similarly you have the west ba wet based analysis in which you only remove the 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 ash content right you can do it for yourself let's say okay do it for yourself number two do it for yourself this is your homework for instance this one is number two the wet based analysis in which you are removing the ash i would write the cumber style based analysis cumber style based analysis and in this i would do what i would remove both of them the moisture and the ash both are eliminated by the factor of what one minus m plus a divided by 100 so both if i am removing so the carbon content would even further increase which means that i am in, uh, removing by this much five point what 5.3 plus 4.4 upon 100 minus 1 so this comes out to be what uh, in this analysis the ash content and the water moisture content both are excluded uh, and this factor the contents are obtained dividing this so 
this comes out to be 0 0.903 this comes out to be 0 0.903. Now, if you want the carbon content, which was initially 80.5%, now you do what? 80.5, you divide by 0 0.903. So this comes out to be, have a look, 89.14%, wow, 89.14%. So initially, have a look. Initially, without any analysis, you were saying that you have 80% carbon composition. Yes, this can be used. This can be used. Simple analysis. Dry basin, you only remove the, the moisture content. What did you have? It increased to, to what? To 84%. And then what? So this became better. And now, if, if you re remove both of the moisture and ash content, so it becomes the carbon content becomes 89%, which is approaching 90%. Wow, this is just an excellent result. You do not need to go any further. 90% is quite an efficient result, right? Yes. Similarly, you can go on further. You can go on further by removing the other contents, for instance, a hydrogen, sulfur content, the nitrogen content. But then the economics come into play. The price would be difficult. The, the, the experiment or the procedure would be difficult. The price would be high. The economics, you don't have the cost. The cost would be high. These were simpler procedures and, and also cheaper procedures and the efficiency is getting quite increased from 80% for instance to 90%. So this is enough. You do not need to play with others. That is difficult. This moisture and ash content removing is quite easy right so similarly can uh, do for the other as well for the nitrogen for oxygen for hydrogen for sulfur do for them divide by the factor whatever factor you get you divide the original composition by that factor to get the new composition is that fine yes so i'm a little tired now i will finish this video over here i will see you in the next videos with what with the calorific values and with some examples Calorific value, you know, this is the amount of heat required to, no, the amount of heat produced by per unit composition of combustion or whatever it is, you know it very well. I'll see you in the next video, most probably with examples. Till then, take care. Goodbye.